So um, earlier today, I gave my first investor pitch at PitchFest Northwest. Um, so I was definitely looking forward to that being over so I could talk to you guys. Because <laughs> uh, you're definitely my people. Um, so I am a code school graduate uh, from Epicodus here in Portland. Um, and I've worked um, at startups throughout my entire career. Um, my degree is in women's studies, and as a developer, I kept hearing from people in the community that they wanted to hire more diverse um, candidates, but here in Portland, it's, it's hard to find non-white guys who will apply. <laughs> and I was going to a lot of meetups where I could find a lot of non-white guys, and I thought, well, this is interesting because we're all out here. Uh, what's going on and what's with the disconnect? So I decided to build a product called Scout Savvy that I'm calling the Smart Diversity and Inclusion Recruiting Platform. And it really makes recruiting easy, fun, and fair. So I wanted to take you guys through uh, the user flow right now for uh, recruiters. So everyone that's wearing a blue badge you're hiring, um, I'd love to talk to you about what you think about my demo. Um, so essentially, when recruiters sign on, they're taken to a dashboard, um, and that allows them to track the metrics of age distribution, um, race and ethnicity distribution, and gender distribution through a recruiting funnel on my site. So what is the demographic makeup of people who look at your company profile? And what is the demographic makeup of people who look at your job description? And what is the ultimate demographic makeup of people who apply to the job? So if you see that more females are looking at your company page and um, more females are looking at your job description, but only uh, half of them are clicking to apply, you can identify that there's something going on in your job description that might be um, sexist and you might not realize it. So it helps you identify where in that funnel you're really um, mis-messaging. And also I'm building out uh, talent matching to help address implicit bias. So what I'm hoping to do is serve you the best candidate who's the best fit for your job and the best fit for your company, um, but I'm not showing the name or the image of the person who's the best match because I want you to train your implicit bias to understand that the person that you click to be their profile might not look like the person that you're imagining when you look at all of their information. So I match based on job preferences, location, years of experience, um, management, director, and executive experience, company experience. And then you can click to view that candidate's profile. And I've also built in social features, so you can um, message folks if you think they're the right fit. You can follow them, I'm calling them your allies. And you can also follow their activity feed to see what they're up to. Um, so with this technology, I'm really excited about helping recruiters quantify all of their diversity efforts and um, help them really identify actionable steps they can take in their recruiting efforts. So let me just show you some of the code. Um, I'm going to show you my schema. This is all in Ruby on Rails. Uh, eventually, when I build out a team, I'm hoping to turn this into an API uh, that will serve data to a variety of mobile apps that will, um, that will work on passive ambient recruiting. So for example, uh, New Relic, you guys through, go through the process of creating job descriptions and putting those job descriptions somewhere, and then someone goes through the process of creating a resume, they send you the resume. It's very old school, especially not, not picking on New Relic. All companies do this. It is very old school. And uh, you know, everyone's walking around with a mobile phone, and we use our phones to tell people where we are, what we're doing, we can order pizza, um, we can talk to our friends. So I really want to turn the mobile phone into a way to find you the best job when you're near. So for example, uh, for all of the jobs you have open at New Relic, the perfect person could be here in the audience, and we wouldn't know. 
Um, but with Scout Savvy, I want to um, create data that will allow you to find that person when they're near your office. So that's the big vision of what I'm working on. But I'm starting here in Portland uh, with my Rails app. Um, yeah. So, oh, I, I just realized that I had to switch over to Adam. Um, so there's my schema. So you can see right now, um, what I'm doing to find the matches, I'm dividing users into cohorts. And for example, these are integers and booleans. So obviously, I'm checking true false on the boolean. And I have a range with integers. For example, I really uh, I threw this meetings attribute in there so uh, you can decide what percentage of your time you like to spend in meetings. Um, my, if I were to create a profile in Scout Savvy, I would probably slide that to zero. <laughs> um, but it, you know, it helps create some data around preferences. Ooh. All right, cool. Questions. <laughs> So you were showing some demographic data for somebody who visited your homepage but didn't fill out an application or visit the job page. So how are you able to get that data? Oh yeah, that's a great question. So those are all Scout Savvy members. So um, when a user onboards and creates a profile, they have the option of adding their race, ethnicity, and gender demographics. And um, at first I wasn't sure if that would be a popular thing to do because I have to keep it op optional legally. Um, but I ha I've had some great um, feedback from users that I've been talking to about onboarding and everyone seems down with it. Um, we'll see once people start using it. Cool. Yeah? Um, so you showed from the recruiter's side that they didn't really see the face or anything until they decided they wanted to view the challenge. What if they wanted to do almost like a business where they just collected all the talent and sent it to third person in HR so they didn't know what they looked like until they actually interviewed? Is that something you wanted to do? Yeah, no, I think I think that's interesting, and um, I really want to see how this user funnel works um, in the market. I have beta testers. Some of the top companies here in Portland are going to be doing it this summer. So Urban, Puppet, um, Zapproved, etc. Um, so I really am just dealing with talent sourcing uh, because once you get into demographics after people apply, then that can get legally dicey. Um, I have two. Um, sure. One of my questions was, since you're collecting the gender information, have you considered using um, non-binary options, or do you just have male and female? <laughs> that's a great, that's a great, great question. So um, I actually have four gender options. I have male, female, trans, and non-binary. Um, and I also talked to someone about perhaps adding gender queer as well. And so we're discussing gender queer, non-binary. Are they the same? Are they not? So I potentially could have five. That's cool. Yeah. Um, the other thing, question I have for you is, um, I don't know if you're aware of Text.io. Um, they're a company that does uh, text analytics on um, job descriptions to look for implicit gender biases. But it seems like it might be a complimentary service like that you might want to integrate with or you know, check out. I love that, yeah. I, I, have, I saw them. And I, I've been very careful not to overbuild this platform because I, I really want to integrate with all the great services out there. Um, I would love to integrate with that. And also, um, in her site is um, a company rating data feed that I also eventually want to pull into here. So, yeah. Oh, yeah. So, as a potential hiring company, can this data be used against me? So, let's say I do have a bias, and that bias is now quantified. And mm -hmm. so now somebody can come and sue me and say, hey, you have a bias against these people because you mm -hmm. Yeah, that's a really great question. I'm working really closely with legal counsel just because demographics and recruiting and hiring is can be potentially very dicey. Um, so can it be used against people? Um, in the hiring, in the recruiting process, I don't believe so because you're using a platform that is intended to be um, all about diversity and inclusion. So just by showing those numbers and and showing what you're doing you know that is private company information and I'm hoping that you'll improve along the way um, so it's something that I'm closely monitoring uh, what's the potential 
legal risk when it comes to demographics for companies. Yeah? Are you specifically uh, studying in a specific like, industry, like tech or in retail or? Mm -hmm. um, I am definitely launching in tech, um, software and hardware. Yeah. Have you heard of Blendor? Um, no, I haven't. But <laughs> I know that there are many other platforms out there yeah. that are trying to do similar things. Yeah. Yeah. Um, she's an African American and she actually completely um, doesn't have like a picture or anything like that. And they only um, look at her job. Yeah, there are lots of folks doing it, and uh, we're all we're all going to work together to solve it. So, yeah, thank you all very much. Thank yeah. You. Thank you.